-hmm. chapter 3. Since you're reading next door at Hebrews, James, chapter 3. I hope I still got chapter 3 in my Bible. Because I work a war about it. I brought this Bible that visited crack houses and everything I've ever been through. I said, I'm going to war. We're going to kill some giants for taking my slave. Bring it down friendship. <laughs> I got some giants. <laughs> so we're looking at James chapter 3, verses 14 to 16, and it says, But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Are y'all with me? See? There is confusion and every evil work. In other words, that confusion means there is instability. What you jealous of? What you envious of? See, sometimes I can deal with a jealous person. It's that envious person that gets your money. So you can be jealous. Oh, you can have that jealousy. I can care less. But the envious person, you got to watch out. But jealousy says, I just don't like what you got. Yeah. But if he says, not only do I not like it, I want what I you got. I want it. I don't even want you to have it. Come on, bro. I will do everything in my power to stop you from being who you are. Because I want to be who you are. See, you got to watch that. If he will kill you. Jealousy, you can handle that any day of the week. But that envious, sneaky person, see, the envious person will sign up to you. They will smile as they become yeah. your best friend. Mm -hmm. Then when the time is right, they will slit your throat. Amen. 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 I hope you're here. Amen. All right, here go the one y'all ain't gonna like. Google. Lust. Amen. Lust. I think we're gonna cover this one. <coughs> Why is lust a giant? Because lust is perceived in the heart. And lust is the only scripture that Jesus used that said, if you thought about it, you did it. Amen. One of my cries to God was this. Well, Lord, since you said that to me, you know, because I was a chronic, yeah, me and we got the dust in there. I had a chronic masturbation problem. Like I'm the only one. Amen. So I said, you said, I, I thought about it and I did it. Well, God, you have to send me to hell because next time I think about it, I'm going to have to do it. That was my speaking thinking. You ain't sending me to hell for something I just thought about. I'm going to make sure I did it. That was my thinking. Oh, I, I ain't telling you to think about it. But it's scared me out of that. I ain't going to hell for just thinking about it. You must be mad. I'm going to have a real deal with the last thing I do. See, this is too real for some of you, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you what we preachers already think about it anyway. I'm just going to put it out there. I told God, if you're going to make me a preacher, you better know I'm going to be unorthodox. I'm going to say the truth about every single thing yeah. that happened in my flesh and that will go on in my life. Yeah. Yeah. and I watch lesbian Amen. The reason why I can say all that is because God has helped me get delivered today. Come on, brother. Amen. Amen. Come on, brother. So, lust conceives. And if God said, this is the one when you think about you doing it, watch this. If you say, come on, brother, let's get together and rob a bank, we won't think about robbing a bank. It ain't going to sin until we do what? We we'll rob the bank. But if we just thinking about it, so when he said, I said, come on, brother, let's take a bite over that girl over there and make her, make her, make her see what's going on. We sinned. Amen. Because we thought about it. Amen. Amen. Y'all feel me? So lust is a powerful giant. Powerful giant. <laughs> let's look at some scriptures. Psalms 81. Let's see what David said. I hope y'all don't mind because I, I just put it out there. You know, I got people telling me I need to quiet it down and, and you know, make it nice and sweet. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm not that kind of man to God. You know? I guess if I was getting hundreds of thousands and thousands of offerings and begging you for a tithe, I wouldn't tell you the truth. You know? Uh -huh. But I got to tell the truth. And I always told the Lord, if you, if you use me, respect the truth. Because that's what you taught me to do. Tell the truth. Truth is what changed me. Truth is what went my tail. Truth is what set me straight. Not some hypocrite. Amen. I don't act out in front of folk. You hit the wrong button, the right thing won't come out. Anyway. 
Psalms 81, verse 10 to 15, what does it say? I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people will not hearken. Hearken means listening with an intent to change. Amen. To my voice. And Israel with none of me. They won't submit. When they said with none of me, it means Israel won't submit. Amen. So I gave them up unto their own hearts. Hello. I gave them up to their own hearts and lust. And they walked in their own counsel. In other words, I'm a God to myself. I don't need your instructions. I'm smart enough to handle it. Yeah. I like to say about the street hood folks. They think they're so smart. Yeah. And they get busted every single time. Yeah. You know what I mean? But they smart. They got it going on. <laughs> then when they get to prison, they figure, oh, I got my right to, you know, my right to passage is to go to jail. Well, you were stupid enough for doing what you did. Now you went to prison too. But you're smart. Uh, that ain't smart. That's stupid. <laughs> but I'm all that, man. I'm hit. I'm hit. You know, like I told you last time, my wife put me up on the sagging thing and spell it backwards. And what did it spell? Uh huh. That blew me away. Well, I put that thing on Facebook. You ought to see how many responses that got. Man, we never knew that. I'm gonna stop sagging. Good. No, you ain't. You know why? Some girl gonna come along and say, "Oh, you look so cute." Huh? They gonna pull them hands right back down because a woman told them they was cute. Ladies, stop telling these brothers they cute with their pants hanging down. They will pull them up. Cause that's the only reason why they doing it. Cause somebody said, "Oh, you so cute. I like your boo boo." <laughs> <laughs> you tell them, "Oh, that's disgusting." They will start pulling them up. <laughs> but long as there's a woman said, "Oh, I like that," they gonna leave them down. Amen. Amen. Let's keep reading. Verse 11. But my people would not hearken unto my voice in order Israel. So I gave them up unto their own hearts' lust, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me. Oh, that my people had listened with an intent to change. And Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon, I should soon have subdued their enemies and turn my hand against their answer. See, if you had submitted to him, he would have immediately subdued your enemies. Amen. <laughs> Verse 15. I like this. The haters of God should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured for him. Amen. Amen. Woo! Woo! Jesus. Amen. Romans 7. Romans 7. Come on, we got, we got a couple more to go here. Romans 7. I got to hit the bottom. I got to give you some encouragement, but there's a chapter in this Bible that will teach you if you pay close attention to what I'm going to say to you. It will teach you how to defeat these spiritual giants in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. So Romans chapter 7. See the devil up in here right now? Oh, he's mad. He's mad. Believe me. He said, why don't you just give them a meal and send them home? <laughs> so I can whip their tail. No, I'm going to tell them how to defeat you. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Romans 7, starting at verse 7. I like what Paul says. So you think you're the only one who struggled with these things? Look at what Paul said. <laughs> starting at verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. No, I have not known sin, but by the law. For I have not known lust. Except the law has said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrote in me all manner of concupiscence. I can't say that. Concupiscence. Con 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 anyway, it's just a heavy type of lust. Okay? That's a word. That word of lasciviousness is a, a lust that is woo, it's overwhelming. You know? It controls you. Okay? Remember I said I was a chronic this and a chronic that? That's lascivious. That's concupiscence. It means it controls me. It's like having crack. You hit that one hit, and you got to have another. And you got to have another. And you can't catch up to the first hit no matter what you do. You're just chasing that first hit. The first hit of crack is the best hit there is, and all you're doing is spending money to try to catch up with that first hit. And you never will. <laughs> to tomorrow morning when you run out of money, then you wake up and you take the first hit again. Boom, and it sends you on another 
race for the first day. <laughs> Christian counselor, 
And those guys had to sit through it and fight their flesh. And if they were falling asleep, guess what they had to do? Stand up. See, I can't tell them guys what they get down to stand up. You know what I mean? I can't say, get up, get up in there in that corner. You know what I mean? But see, in the Christian rehab, Canaan ministry or teen child, I've been telling them, brother, to get up or you're going to be on discipline. Amen. Or you're going to be washing dishes when you're getting up for you when everybody else had to get up at 6 a.m. See, that's boot camp Christian style. Amen. If you want your deliverance, you want to do whatever it takes. Amen. Amen. So, Matthew 7. Look at uh, verse 25. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the winds blow, and beat upon the house. Now, that house there represents your soul. That's an idiom for your soul. Like, I ain't getting shit. Let me get it in a second. And it fell not, for it was it was founded upon a what? Rock. Oh. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. Right. Now, what does the sand represent here? Your own ideas. Okay. So you're building your house upon.